Okay, so today I have something that uh, is probably pretty boring to you and might not mean anything and you might not care. But on the other hand, you might care. Uh, I'm going to show you how to read ohms off your subwoofer with the multimeter. Now you might be wondering, you're like, you're like, well, why do I need to? Why do I need to know how many ohms my subwoofer is? You know, my subwoofer has. It tells me right on the back of the sub. Well, if you buy big like competition subs, like uh, like uh, my Ground Zeroes, uh, Digital Designs uh, probably rolls that way. Um, like the expensive ones, uh, a lot of them uh, don't have stamped. Uh, baskets or magnets whatever you want to say uh, let me show you what I'm talking about like this Rockford I got here it's got a glare I don't know if it has a glare on your end but if you read it it says right there uh, I don't know if you can read it or not but right there it says it's 8 ohms so you know 8 ohms it's a single voice coil and then you go over here to my JL W3 it tells you um, da, 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 oh, right here I was probably had it on there the whole time it's a dual 4 ohm voice coil it's dual voice coil 4 ohms so you go over here to my ground zero and you look at the bottom of it you see nothing it's all shiny and pretty and all that good stuff. So if you bought this off of somebody and they couldn't tell you how many ohms it is, then you could potentially have a problem because um, you want to you want to know how many ohms your sub is. So that way you you uh, like when you buy an amp, it'll tell you um, you know you say you buy a thousand watt amp and it'll say at four ohms it'll give you. Uh, 400 watts well, or at 2 ohms it'll give you 600 watts or 700 watts and uh, if it, maybe if it's like 1 ohm stable at 1 ohms it might give you the 1000 watts or so it says depending on what kind of amp you buy so you kind of need to know because if your subwoofer is 4 ohms and you know you're hooking up at 4 ohms so you're getting you can look at the ratings on your amp and you're like okay this is how much power I'm getting but if you have a sub like my Rockford over here that's reading 8 ohms and you hook this sub up to a, uh, an amplifier that's like a thousand watts you could only be getting maybe a hundred watts or like 200 watts it says so you ain't getting you like you could be getting like no power to it you know and this subwoofer could be um, I, I can't remember how many watts this thing is this was one of my first subs I had back in the day but um like if this subwoofer was like an 800 watt sub, which there's no freaking way it would be, not this series, but uh, if it was like an 800 watt sub, and you're pushing 8 ohms on a 1000 watt amp, you're only getting 200 of those 1000 watts, or 800 watts, or whatever. So you're not getting any power, you're not getting the power you want. So you kind of want to know what ohms you got, so you know how much power. Also if you have a dual voice coil sub, um, like my uh, JL and my Ground Zero, I know that each voice coil reads 4 ohms. So um, if I hook the two together in parallel, I'm going to be getting 2 ohms. Very good to know. But check it out. Here's all you got to do. I got my multimeter here. Fancy little thing. I think it's like 20 bucks at Walmart. I haven't used it a lot and honestly I don't know what most of that does. I actually bought it to see uh, what the ohms were on my ground zeros because I didn't know. I mean, I, I wasn't sure. You know, I didn't know these. I didn't know my 15. I didn't know, so I had to find out. So, I bought me one of these multimeters to read how many ohms it was. And right there, there's a little ohm signal or symbol, duh, whatever. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna flick it down here, and it says uh, it says 200 down here. And I'm sure you probably can't see it because it's looking blurry through my screen. But right here, it says 200. That's when I'm gonna flip it on. I think I'm doing this right. I'm, I mean, this is how I do it, and it, and it works. Um, but um, you gotta plug these two things in. They come with it, and then you got your negative 
and you got your positive. And all you do, when you got that on, I'm reading one right now, which is nothing, is you just touch them to your positive, sorry, positive, and your negative. And if I look down here, I'm getting 3.8. And this is a 4 ohm subwoofer. You know, it bounces around 3.9. Um, and some of them were kind of bounce around. Some, uh, like a 4 ohm subwoofer, you might be getting 4.1, 4.2, 4.3 maybe. Or you could be getting uh, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9. .3 it kind of. All the subs in my experience have done that. Just in my experience. I don't know. I ain't saying nothing about all the subs. They might be on the dot. I don't know. But all the ones I've done, they kind of bounce up a little more or a little less. You kind of just, you know, figure it out, you know. Goes a little bit more, a little bit less. You kind of, you know, go to like two, four, eight ohms. And then like uh, my Rockford Fosgate, eight ohms. Go down here. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, so bear with me. Touch it on there. Look over here. I'm getting 7.1, 7.2. And I'm kind of around in there. I could have an interference because I got this old speaker wire hooked up on here. Messing with it. That's actually blown Rockford. And then I go over here to my ground zero. Ah, hold on. Let me spin it around. And I got my little screw terminals here. Little ter terminals. Terminals stick my uh, positive and my negative up in there this is actually hitting down like that nah, sorry kind of bouncing around I got it unsteady and get it back in here right three six three five that right there is dual four ohms sorry it's kind of bouncing around it's hard to hold it steady so you see how it bounces around I got dual four ohm ground zero and dual 4 ohm JLW3 and if I hook these together and uh, put the speaker wires together it would be reading 2 ohms because it would be splitting them in half so I'd be getting a 2 ohm load and um, if I did that to, to both of my ground zeros and then put that speaker to wire it split it from 2 ohms down to 1 ohm so yeah might be a uh, pointless information to you but Anything I can think of, I try to put on there to help anybody out that needs it. So now you know how to read your ohms on your subwoofer with a multimeter. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope this helps one person in the world anyway, or a couple people. I looked, I searched for it before, or I searched for it on YouTube, and I couldn't. I don't know if I, I think I could find it, but it was. I don't know. People, some people do things kind of complicated, and I don't understand it as well, but. Um, if you have any questions about the multimeter, uh, I'll tell you right now, I'm not really the guy to ask because uh, I'm not really good at using a multimeter. I haven't really messed with them very much. I just got it to do this um, months ago, actually. So, uh, thanks for watching. Used and abused. She was a good one, back in its prime.